I got something in my heart. Hallelujah. Something stirred me up. I love them old songs. Praise God. Whew. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Go with me to Exodus chapter 3. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for the opportunity to minister. I pray that by the end of this message, you'll be so encouraged that you'll be wanting to do like David. I could run through a troop. I could leap over a wall. Praise God. Exodus chapter 3. I want to start with verse number 13. Praise God. I got a, I got a song in my heart. I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. Oh, what a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. I got any free people in here? I am free. Praise the Lord, I'm free, no longer bound, no more chains holding me, my soul is resting, oh what a blessing, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free, I'm thankful to be free tonight. I think God's been speaking to us all morning. This whole service this morning was about freedom. I really feel that freedom. Praise God. I'm going to stop. I could go all night. It's the praise team's fault. They got me all worked up. So if, it's, if I get on your nerves, talk to them after service, not me. <laughs> Exodus chapter 3, starting with verse number 13. The word says, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. For a few moments tonight, I want to minister on the subject entitled, The Name for All Generations. Let's bow our heads, please. Heavenly Father, I come to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for the word of God. I thank you, Lord, for this congregation tonight that have set aside time to give in the evening sacrifice. I praise you, Lord, for your freedom that's found in the blood of Jesus. And, Lord, I ask you, Lord, for the anointing. The anointing is what breaks the yoke of bondage. I ask you to anoint me, Lord, to minister. Anoint these to hear and receive. We will give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. And amen. Proverbs 18 and 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. A name brings identity. There's a lot of names in the world that are really iconic. If I said those names, you'd know who they are, what they are about, what they've accomplished just by the name. If I said the name Trump, you'd know exactly who I'm talking about. I wouldn't have to go into a, a exegesis of who he is. 
If I said the name Oprah, you'd know who she was just by one word, that name. There's names that carry heavy weight. Just by saying that name, you know who they are, the influence they've had, their character. You know a lot about them just by the name. Name brings about identity. A name gives us insight into who a person is and who they are. This is why God has chosen throughout scripture to tell us his name. He's got quite a few names. We find him to be Jehovah Rapha. We know that to be the Lord my healer. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord my banner. Or really in the Hebrew, how it's translated, the Lord fights my battles and causes me to win. Jehovah Shammah, which means the Lord is present. And Jehovah Roe, which is the Lord is my shepherd. There's quite a few names. But in our scripture text, we find a name given by God to identify himself to his people. The names of God are windows whereby we can look to see his character and where his identity can be seen. If he did not tell us his name, we would not know who he is and what he is capable of doing. So for 400 years, we find Israel trapped in Egyptian bondage. They're trapped under the, under the leadership of Pharaoh. Pharaoh even believes he is God. And even that name brought about fear, Pharaoh. When you heard that name, you knew who it was. You knew you were to bow the knee at him. You knew you were to obey his commands. And for 400 years, the Israelites, they're slaves in Egyptian bondage. They've lost their identity. They've lost their purpose. They've lost everything they've known. They've lost the land that God gave them through Joseph. They've lost their, 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 their personality. They, they have taken on this slave mentality mentality of Egypt but God's got somebody in the backside of a desert somewhere who he wants to reveal himself to Moses has been sitting in that desert 40 years and he's walking out one day in the wilderness and he's just going to just do his job and he looks out and he sees a bush that's on fire but it's not consumed and he gets a little intrigued And he says, I've got to go figure out what in the world this bush is doing. Why is it not burning up? He goes and he hears a voice speak out out of that bush. Says, Moses, take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. And God begins to speak to Moses. He's 80 years old. And this mysterious voice is speaking out of this bush. He's telling Moses, I have chosen you to be the deliverer for your people. You're going to go to Pharaoh. You're going to tell him, let my people go. And there will be a great deliverer deliverance and Moses tries to argue with God you know we try to argue with God sometimes Lord I I don't know if I can do this I don't know if I'm capable and he gets down to a point to where he says well God you know what what who am I gonna go tell him I can't go tell him a bush sent me I can't go tell him a fire sent me I can't go tell him that a voice sent me who am I going to say who sent me who am I going to tell them brought me to them to bring deliverance God tells him a strange strange word he says you tell them I am that I am it don't make any sense It's confusing at first. Moses doesn't understand. Moses doesn't understand, but he's telling, he's telling Moses. He wants to reveal himself in a new way to Moses. He wants to reveal himself in a new way. First, he tells Moses, you gotta understand. He reveals himself as the God of the covenant. He says, I am the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. You never hear God say he was the God of Abraham. He is the God. I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. I am the God of Jacob. I'm still that God that called Abraham out of Ur of the Chaldeans. I'm still the God that spoke Isaac into existence. I'm still the God that wrestled with Jacob in the wilderness. 
I am that God and I'm calling you out and the same covenant I've got with them I've got with the people in Egypt right now and I want to reveal myself to you in a new way so he reveals himself first as the God of the covenant but Exodus 6 and 3 tells us that God wants to reveal himself in a new way He tells Moses in Exodus 6 and 3, he had only revealed himself as God Almighty or El Shaddai. He had not revealed himself in this particular way, but he was about to. Up until that time, nobody knew God in this way. Nobody knew God except as El Shaddai, God the Almighty. But God wants to reveal himself to Moses first. You've got to understand, God has to reveal himself to you before you can ever be revealed to anybody else. God had to reveal himself to Moses in a new way so he could go preach it to the Israelites. If God has not been revealed to you, you cannot reveal him to anybody else. He has to be revealed to you before you can reveal him to anybody else. He has to become real to you before he can become real to anybody else through your words. So God says, I've been, I've been revealed as El Shaddai, God Almighty, but I want to reveal myself as Jehovah or Yahweh, which is what I am is in the Hebrew, Yahweh. It's the God that the Israelites revered so much that they wouldn't even speak the name. They wouldn't even spell it out in its entirety because they were afraid if they said it or spelt it out, they could take it in vain. Oh, how we've fallen from grace. They were afraid to even say the name for fear of taking it in vain. But God wants to reveal himself as Yahweh, the I am that I am. And even though we do find when you study the scripture, you'll find the word Yahweh in Genesis. And a lot of theologians and and commentators have argued over, well, if it's not been revealed until Moses, why is it written in the Genesis accounts? You have to understand, Moses wrote Genesis. So when he went back and wrote it, he wrote it as Yahweh. Because he had been revealed to him in that way. He had revealed himself. And the Lord told Moses... He said, I'm going to reveal myself to you because this is the name that's going to be a memorial name for me for all generations. All generations shall know me from this moment on as Yahweh, the I am that I am. God wanted to reveal himself to his people. Why give a name? Why give a name? Because like I said, a name tells identity. So we know the story of the Exodus account. We know how Moses went to Pharaoh and told Pharaoh to let his people go. Moses went 10 times to Pharaoh. 10 times. That was not by accident. He went 10 times to Pharaoh and God sent 10 plagues. That was not by accident. Every single time God wanted to reveal himself in a new way. We're going somewhere with this. There were ten gods in Egypt that God attacked through those plagues. Ten gods with a name, but he wanted to reveal himself In a new way. Number one, the first plague we see was God turning the river Nile into blood. The God of Egypt that was over the river Nile was called Hapai. And this God was pictured, illustrated as a God who carried water. But God told Moses, let Aaron touch it with his rod. I'm going to turn that water into blood. I'm going to show the Egyptians, Hapa does not have any power over the water. The I am does. <laughs> Glory to God. And the, and the magicians tried to do their little works. But oh, Pharaoh was not impressed with the wonders of God yet. Seven days, this water stayed the way it was, bloody. Nobody could drink it. 
Nobody could fool with it. Even the Israelites were affected by this. Everyone was affected. Hapai had no power, but the I am did. The second plague God sent through Aaron's rod was frogs that come out of the Nile River. This god of the Egyptians was called Heket. Heket was a goddess who had the head of a frog. And God brought all these frogs and it plagued everybody. There was frogs everywhere, frogs in the house, frogs outside, frogs in the food, frogs in the bed. God was showing Egypt and Israel. He can't, he's not the God of the frog. The I am is. He's revealing himself to Israel. He's revealing himself even to Egypt. Don't you think God wanted Egypt to bow the knee to him? Yes, he did. But Pharaoh is, he's not going to bow. He's not going to stumble. And he won't even, he won't even uh, bring himself down to humble himself. He, he hardened his heart again. The third plague was lice that came from the dust of the earth. This god of the Egyptians was called Geb. Geb was over the dust of the earth. And God made lice out of the dust. Again, he's showing Israel, Geb is not the god of the dust. The I am is. He's showing Pharaoh, Geb is not the god of the dust. I am. And this is the one plague that made all the magicians in Egypt, they baffled their minds. And they went to Pharaoh and they said, this is not magic, this is the finger of a God. This is the finger of God. And this is the last plague that God would use Aaron's involvement. The next plagues, they'd all come from the mouth of Moses. The next, the next attack on Egypt was flies, a swarm of flies. This God name was Capri, Capri. It was the God of creation, the movement of the sun and rebirth. Its head illustrated was as the head of a fly. <laughs> and God brought a storm of flies to totally just cover Egypt. Once again, God is saying Capri is not the God of the flies. I am. I am the God of all creation. It covered the whole land. You get my, you get my drift now? What's going on in Egypt? The next plague was the death of the cattle and the livestock. This Egyptian god was Hathor. She's the goddess of love and protection. Her head was illustrated as the head of a cow. You get what God's doing? He's making a mockery of every god they've got. And he's revealing himself to Israel. I know you've walked around 400 years. You've seen this God with the head of a frog. You've seen this God as the head of a cow. You've seen this God as the head of a fly. But there is no God bigger than me. It is I am that I am. Glory to God. Woo. Every cattle and livestock died. God's telling Pharaoh, your God ain't got a thing on me. I am the one that holds everything in my hands. I am the I am that I am. The next plague, ashes turned bowls into sores. This was an attack against Isis, the Egyptian goddess of medicine and peace. This really hit the Egyptians because when they were sick, they couldn't stand in the presence of Pharaoh. And for this entire time, they could not offer up sacrifice. They could not praise Pharaoh. They couldn't come in the temple. They had to stay unclean, unclean. God hit them. and Their protection didn't do anything. Their God didn't keep them. Their medicine God didn't do anything. I love this one. The next one was hail that rained down in the form of fire. This god is the goddess of the sky, and her name was Nut. <laughs> what a god to have. Who do you worship, Nut? And that's exactly what you are. Hallelujah. A nut. You think that all these gods exist. But God rained down hailstones in the form of fire. And God was saying there is no God that can control the sky but the I am. He's trying to reveal himself to his people. The next plague was locusts sent from the sky. This was an attack against their god Seth. He is the Egyptian god of storms and disorder. 
these, these locusts began to destroy everything, everything in Egypt. They're, they're, all their crops are getting destroyed. He is making a mockery out of their gods and he's destroying everything in his path. He's trying to reveal himself to these people. The next attack, the ninth plague, was three days of complete darkness. This was against one of their highest gods, Ra, the sun god. God made it completely dark. I'm not talking about like the eclipse that's coming. We're gonna, still going to have a little bit of light. No, God made the sun darkness. This is a darkness you could feel for three days. He's attacking everything they know. He's revealing himself as the all-sufficient, all-powerful God that he is. The Egyptians thought the sun brought all power, all life. And when that sun was darkened, it showed death and it showed separation. God was showing there is no life without me. And the last plague, we all know what that was. The death of the firstborn son. And that hit Pharaoh himself who thought, watch this. Everybody in Egypt thought Pharaoh was a god. They even believed he was the son of Ra. God in the flesh. You picking up where we're going? He thought he was God. Manifested in the flesh. And God took his firstborn son. Took his only son. Destroyed him. He's making a mockery. He's showing and revealing himself to his people. That's the great I am. That was not coincidence. That was not happenstance. It was God showing and revealing himself as God of all. The I am that I am. He's showing Israel whatever you have need of, I am it. The sun cannot help you, its power comes from me. The ground cannot help you, its source comes from me. Even the water comes from me. The sky comes from everything. That voice that spoke in the beginning, let there be light, it come from me. I am the I am that I am. Everything comes from me. The source, everything comes from God. And he's revealing himself to his, he's never revealed himself this way before to anybody but Moses and these Egyptians and there's three million Israelites in this camp that's been plagued for many years. He's showing them who he is. And all this fame spreads abroad. Because when Joseph and those two spies go to a city called Jericho, there's a harlot in a city some, in Jericho, and she's up top of the, top of the building. And they go in that house, and she says, you don't have to tell me who you are. You don't have to tell me what God you serve. We've already heard of what he's done. Wiping out Egypt. We've already heard about what he's done. God's revealing himself as the all-sufficient, all-powerful God. Why would he reveal himself this way? Why? Because he wants, he wants relationship with you. You can know somebody all you want to when you get personal with them. You know their name. You know what they've been through. They begin to reveal their self to you. Then you know them in a new way. God begins to reveal himself. God. This one God. Revealing himself to his people. In a new and a precious way. The I am. That I am revealed in the Old Testament. But it don't stop there. It doesn't stop in Exodus. It doesn't stop in the Old Testament. Isaiah 52, 6 says, Therefore my people shall know my name. 
Therefore, on that day, I'm the one that is speaking here. I am. Jesus was sent to fulfill the scriptures. Everything Jesus did was fulfilling the scriptures. Jesus even said that the law and the prophets testified of him. In John, eight and, in John chapter 8, Jesus had a discourse with the Pharisees. He forgave that lady who was caught in adultery. And they began having an argument with him. He began telling him, look, we, we've not been in bondage. We're children of Abraham. And he says, he begins to contest them about their beliefs, how I'm brought of the Father. If you had known the Father, you'd know me. If you had known him who sent me, you are of your father the devil. You're not of the, uh, of the spirit, you are of this world. And Jesus tells them, he says in John chapter 8 and 28, when you've lifted up the Son of Man, then you shall know that I am. Uh oh. They began to argue. And he said, Before Abraham was, I am. Glory to God. That really made him mad. Can I tell you who was speaking to the Pharisees on that day? He was the voice that said, let there be light. He was the voice that called Abraham out of that camp. He was the voice speaking to Moses in that burning bush, saying, I am that I am. It's Jesus. Jesus came to fulfill scripture. Jesus came to fulfill what God had already began to reveal in Exodus. I want to reveal myself to my people. I want to speak to my people. I want to show them who I am. And Jesus said, you call yourself children of Abraham, but before there ever was an Abraham, I was. Before there ever was an Abraham, I am. I've been here from the beginning. I am self-sufficient. I don't need anybody. I wasn't created. I wasn't spoken to exist. Existence. I've always been, I am, and always shall be. I'm telling you, Jesus came to fulfill that scripture. He came to fulfill that, and that voice that revealed himself to Moses was standing in the very presence of them. Woo. Standing right there in the middle of them. The voice that came out of that burning bush. I am that I am. But it don't stop there. No, it don't. As he goes to the garden, he's praying, Lord, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. But you know what? Not my will, but yours be done. I know why I came. I came to pay sin's penalty. I came to do what they couldn't do. We've seen the name revealed. But now we're about to see the name fulfilled. Glory to God. We've seen it revealed, but we're about to see it fulfilled. He's standing in the garden. Judas and the Roman soldiers come. They, and Jesus looks at them. He says, whom do you seek? And they say, we seek Jesus of Nazareth. And he says, I am he. Now, when you look at that verse, you'll notice he is in italics. And if you ever notice a, a word in italics, it means it wasn't originally in the original manuscripts. They put it there for easier reading. But what he really said was, I am. Yes. And the Bible says when he said that, everybody fell back on their backs like dead men. Because it wasn't the voice of a natural man talking. It was the same voice that come out of that burning bush. And there was so much power in it that it blew back the men. And they said, he said, who do you seek again? They said, we seek Jesus. He said, I am again. I'm telling you, Jesus wasn't just a man. Jesus was God manifested in the flesh. He is the fulfillment of the great I am. He is everything you need. He's everything you need. Oh, yes. 
I got a little nervous when pastor got on Philippians 2 because I said calm down a little bit you're walking all around the message and this is all about a name all about a name can I tell you Philippians 2 9 through 11 says wherefore God hath highly exalted him who's him Jesus and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow things in heaven things in earth things under the earth every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father how can I tell you something it's not necessarily this this name of Jesus that's so exalted what is the thing is this Jesus this is the Christ the son of the living God he was always the great I am as God but that never helped anybody in their sin it was until he clothed himself in humanity it was when he stripped himself of the deity of God he's 100% God he's 100% man but he never used that deity power here on earth he walked like a man he walked like you and I God could have come and died and it never would have helped anybody because you're not God and he's still more perfect than you but when he wrapped himself in the likeness of sinful flesh he lived this life for you and I he fulfilled the law he became man for you and I and the great I am stepped into the world he went to Calvary he died for you and I that's why that name's higher than any other he's the only man who could ever hold the title of the great I am no man could hold that name but Jesus no man could be called I am but Jesus he said I came to do the will of the father everything I do he's told me to do nobody's worthy to be called the great I am but Jesus that's why that name is above every name that's why demons tremble at that name. That's why sickness flees at that name. That's why all infirmity falls at that name. That's why every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, because the great I am is the Lord of all. He's the Lord of all creation, and He is living in me. Glory to God. He ain't in a bush no more. He's not in a tabernacle no more. He's not in a box. He is in me. Glory to God. He's in me. The I am is right here. Oh my goodness. The I am is right here. The I am is right. The word became flesh. Dwelt among us. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. Why? Why did the great I am. Why? He could have stopped it revealing himself. That would have been okay. But he didn't stop there. He wanted to fulfill what that name even means. I am that I am, translated the Hebrew means, I shall be whatever you need me to be. So God looked down. He saw man was deep in sin. There's no way they can come to me. So I am that I am. I'll go down and become a sin sacrifice. I shall be what they need me to be. I shall be the sacrifice of all flesh. I shall be. He's been trying to show us this from the beginning. The Bible says he's a lamb slain from the foundation. He's been trying to reveal himself this way from the very beginning. But it had to be fulfilled. It had to be fulfilled. And the only one who could fulfill it was God and God came down the great I am came down he became sin who knew no sin that we might become the righteousness of God I I shall be what they need me to be can somebody give God a praise I am I am hallelujah I am Isaiah 53 says He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes, we are healed. He became 
what you and I needed him to become. I got a question for you tonight. What do you need God to become tonight? Because he's saying whatever you need, I am that already. Hallelujah. Jesus said, there's really seven times in the gospel, but eight times in scripture, you'll find Jesus quoting I am. John 6, 35, 48, and 51, he says, I am the bread of life. When your fathers was eating manna in the wilderness, when they said this manna, manna in the Hebrew means what is it? And God said, when you were eating that, what is it? It was me in the wilderness. I was sustaining them. I'm the bread. Of, I am the bread of life. I am what you need me to be. You need bread. I am the bread of life. Glory to God. John 8 and 12 and 9 and 5, he said, I am the light of the world. There is no light besides God. He's the one who brings light. In John 10 and 7 and 9, he said I am the door of the sheep in John 10 11 and 14 he says I am the good shepherd in John 11 and 25 he said I am the resurrection and the life in John 14 and 6 he said I am the way the truth and the life in John 15 and 1 he said I am the true vine and in Revelation 1 8 and in 22 13 he said I am the alpha the omega the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I was uh, I was dead, but now I'm alive forevermore. Oh, glory to God. He is whatever you need him to be tonight. If you need a healing, I am the healer. If you need a miracle, I am the miracle. He is everything you need. Uh, I'm getting ready to run. Hallelujah. I am that I am. He became what we need him to be. He became what we need him to be. <laughs> I'm so glad he's the I am. He's my provider. He's my healer. He's my savior. When I was dirty, he became my righteousness. <laughs> When I was lost, he became my deliverer. <laughs> when I was bound, he became the king that set me free. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. He became what I needed him to be. I don't know what he became for you, but I know what he became for me. I was stuck in my religion, and he came, and he, he, he came in my situation, and he lit me on fire, and I haven't been the same since. He is the beautiful rose of Sharon. He's the bright in the morning star. He is the lily of the valley. He's everything you need him to be. You've got bills to pay. He's the bill payer. If you've got pain in your body, he's the pain taker. If you've got things you need, he is your need meter. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what is in your situation. He's already revealed himself and he's already fulfilled it. Everything you need is wrapped up in Jesus. He's the fulfillment of the word. He's the fulfillment of everything God wanted to do in the way and from the beginning of time. Whew. I feel that tonight. I feel that tonight. It doesn't matter what I need. Guess what? We're praying for revival. He's revival. In Acts 2... He told him, don't you go nowhere because this God that's been with you, he now shall be in you. Joseph, you're going to call him Emmanuel, God with us. And in the upper room, 120, they don't know what they're waiting on. They just said, waiting on the promise. What's the promise? What was the promise? What was the promise? God in the spirit, the great I am, coming to live right here, right here, the I am that I am. That's why you don't have to go to a priest. 
You don't have to go to a preacher. You don't have to go to a conference, a camp meeting. The all-sufficient God is in my body. I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. He ain't in that bush no more. He's in me. Why should I worry about anything? When the one who split the Red Sea, (laughs) he's in me. You starting to get a hold of it? The one who shut the mouths of the lion's jaw, he's in me. The fourth man in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, he's in me. (laughs) Glory to God. He's in me. The God who put a little Holy Ghost power on that rock for David, he's in me. He's in me. A few weeks ago, before Pastor, long before Pastor asked me to minister, I was standing in that altar. And I don't know if anybody else, maybe I'm just weird. But sometimes when I feel like a message in tongues is going to come forth, the Lord already gives me somewhat the interpretation, gets me ready. I, I don't understand that. I, I've prayed, prayed to God. I hope it's all right. I hope it's true. And I always feel like it's of the Lord. Not all of it, just a piece. And the rest of it comes when the faith comes in. But the other day I was standing there and I heard, I am. And I thought, oh, there comes a message. But no message come forth. I said, God, what do you want me to do? He said, it's not a message in tongues. It's a message I want you to preach. He said, because I want you to encourage my people to let them know I am that I am. Because <laughs> I feel like we've been through some stuff here recently that's really knocked us back. But God wants to tell you tonight I am that I am. I have need of nothing. I, 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 if you don't have the strength, I am. It's not that He has strength, He is strength. It's not that he has life, he is life. It's not that he has healing, he is healing. It's not that he has victory, he is victory. It's not that he has deliverance, he is deliverance. It's not that he has, he is, I am that. Whatever you need me to be, that is what I am. In the situation you need. Revealed and fulfilled in you and I. He's right here. Why worry about anything? Why worry? You've got the sea walking, blind man healing, leper cleansing, man from Galilee living in you. You don't have just a regular man in you. You've got the great I am in you. You've got the one who spoke the world into existence. You've got the one who John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I saw a man come to me, his eyes like fire, his hair white as wool, his feet like bronze and he had a voice that sounded like many waters. He touched me and I felt like a dead man. That's the, that's the God, Jesus. That's, that's the God that Satan sees in you. You want to know why Satan hates you? He sees that God in you. He sees that God in that great I am. You've got the God that crippled the gods of Egypt inside of you. (laughs) You've got the God who has torn down every ideology and does not line up with his word in you. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage, and I'm about ready to close. I don't want to hold you too long. Just encourage you. He's here. He doesn't live in this sanctuary. He lives in you. There should never be a time we enter this house where somebody doesn't get healed, 
saved, delivered, set free. Why should we ever leave dry when the I am's in the room? You should never leave this sanctuary and say, well, I didn't feel it today. No, he's here. Don't ever think, well, we're just going to leave it up to pastor to bring us in. Leave it up to the praise team to bring us in. No, no, no. The great I am is in you. Don't wait on pastor to go lay hands on somebody who's sick. You got the great I am in you. You go over there and pray. You don't wait on somebody to go pray deliverance over somebody. You got the great I am. Say in the name of Jesus, I cast, I cast whatever's on you off of you. I command every evil spirit. Why? It ain't you. It's the great I am in you. I'm not talking because of my authority. Devils don't bow down because of my name. They bow down because of the name that's been put on me because of the birth and the, of the spirit in me. The blood, the blood, that last plague, what was it that made the devil and the Pharaoh let the people go? It was the blood. And like Pete said, when Jesus said it is finished and that blood, that blood was so powerful, like Pastor said this morning, it was so powerful that when the blood soaked the ground, dead folks come out the ground. And somebody said, wait a minute. You've been dead 10 years. How'd you get up? The blood. All of a sudden, I heard a voice said, rise up. I heard a voice. And Jesus went down in the depths of hell. Never got burnt. Never suffered. He didn't have to suffer. He's God. But he looked at the devil. He said, I know you got the keys of death, hell, and the grave. I'm the I am that I am. I went to heaven. I applied the blood. Now give them to me. Now I'm going to go set Abraham free. I'm going to go find Moses. And I'm going to tell him, Moses, the one who talked to you in the burning bush, I'm right here. And you're coming with me, buddy. (laughs) You're coming with me. Because he's got freedom in his hand. He's got healing in his wings. The great I am. The name for all generations. That's why when John said, who's worthy to open this book up? Nobody. Nobody. But an elder came and tapped John and said, don't worry, John. The lion of the tribe of Judah has overcome. He's worthy. John looked up. He said, I saw a lamb as it was slain. He's the only one that's worthy to pour out wrath because he took the wrath. I want to say this, and I'm closing. I believe this is a word from God for this church. You've drank from the cup of bitterness long enough. You've drank from the cup of offense long enough. You've drank from the cup of depression long enough. You've drank from the cup of inferiority long enough. You've drank from those cups long enough. He drank from the cup of wrath so that living water could be poured out unto you. The I am, the all-sufficient God. I pray tonight, somehow, through the words of this preaching, if anything, you've got encouraged. Because God has shown even to me, he's bigger than even I think he is. (laughs) I don't need anything but him. You have to let him reveal himself to you in this way. We can never go forth in power until we know who he is. And he's shown us in his word who he is. But not only that, if you're born again, he's put the name on you. 
So everywhere you go, you're like the prodigal son. Not only do you get a brand new pair of clothes on you, there's a feast going on in heaven, but you got a signet ring on. That's the name. You've got authority everywhere you go. This signet ring, this name on me, this I am that I am on me means everywhere I go, everywhere my feet touch, demons have to obey me. Everywhere I go, sickness has to obey me because it, it ain't me. The I am's in me. You've got more power than you think you've got. You've got more authority than you think you've got. The I am. I shall be whatever you need me to be. Oh, I pray this has helped somebody. I pray this has helped somebody. This altar call is very simple. Maybe you've lost track of who he is. Maybe you just got in with the motions. You've really forgotten how big your God is. It's time to come get a refreshing. Or maybe you need him to be something he's shown you tonight. I'm whatever you need me to be. I'm whatever you need me to be. I'm whatever you need me to be. The I am that I am is here. I pray all over this house. If there's anybody not right with God, I want you to come down here. The I am's calling. I feel a sweet presence in here. Let him refresh you. Bible says, repent so that the times of refreshing may fall upon you. If you have gotten to a place where you've forgotten how big he is, just repent and let the refreshing fall on you.
Jesus, help me be strong. Don't get down here in pity. You get down here in victory. You praise Him in victory. You praise Him. You tell the devil to his face, the I am is living in me. Don't you ever let the devil tell you you are nothing again when the I am's in you. Praise God. Glory to God. sense a special spirit in here I told Jeff when you couldn't be there danger is not at your door it's in your house he couldn't get there fast enough that car is fast. It's not a jet plane. But when you needed a protector, the great I am was in the house. And he stopped the flood. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, I shall lift up a standard against him. Woo. It wasn't that gun that scared him. It was the I am. The eyes like fire looked into the devil's eyes. He said, you're leaving. When you need something, he don't have it, he is it. He is it. He is it. Buddy, he's the great I am. If you'll let him be that, you'll never go back to who you was. 
you'll be what he is. I feel a wave of the glory of God getting ready to come. There's refreshing getting ready to come. Miss Rachel, I'm going to ask you to sing that song again. I'm going to put this microphone in this stand. And I'm just going to go sit down. And I'm going to watch God do the rest. Because I believe there's going to be a refreshing about to hit this place. And I want to be involved. I want the refreshing too. I want it to fall. I need it. I need a refreshing. I need a touch of heaven. I hope there's a Pentecostal refreshing that hits this place. I hope (laughs) there's getting ready to get something taking place in here. You need something. Call out to God. He is. He is. He is. He is. He is. He is. He is all you need. Glory to God. This song was written from one of Brother Wesley's sermons. Jesus, oh, I believe. But when I doubt, please help my unbelief. Help me lay these burdens down. Help me lay these burdens down When my soul is so weary And the waiting is so long Help me, Lord Jesus Help me be strong Help me lay these burdens down. Help me lay these burdens down. When my soul is so weary and the waiting is so long, help me, Lord Jesus. Bye. 